Okay, so let me call this meeting to order. I have 610, or is it 611? 611. 611 p.m. So we have... We have uh, myself, Bill Schmidt, as the chair, uh, Astrid Wines as vice chair, Susan McGuire as member. Now, my understanding, if I'm correct, is this going to be live streamed on WCIT? Or we don't know? I think it is. Okay. Okay. Do we, so have, do we, have, um, do we have WCAT present? Well, I can see them yes. showed up here. So let me... Let, Let's presume that we are being live streamed. So I'm just um, mentioning that as a okay. So I'm mentioning that as a caution, so people obviously know that uh, what they say will be recorded for posterity. So be on your best behavior, and that includes myself. And also, in terms of if we do discuss any issues regarding uh, patients at a any kind of a healthcare facility, there are HIPAA requirements. So we should not mention anyone's names. I will ask Astrid because we have kind of a busy agenda to try to prompt us to kind of stick to our time frames to some degree as best we can so that we can move through the uh, to this since we are starting a little bit um, late. Yep. So the, the first uh, issue come on our agenda is public comment. I will ask for speakers to try to stick to three minutes each if possible. So do we have... Uh, folks who would like to speak under public comment and please ask to be recognized. I, Hi, I'm John Morgan. John, what was your last name, John? Uh, John Morgan. I don't know what the agenda is, so I'd like to okay. postpone no, my comment. Yeah, public, public comment is, is your opportunity to speak on anything. And you're uh, you a resident in Winthrop? Yes, I am. I'm okay. Golden Drive. Okay. Well, go ahead, John. Well, I'd like to say, number one, that I'm very happy that the restaurants are able to serve outside of takeout. Uh, I do have a concern regarding uh, how they're going to set up tables outside in the center with all the construction equipment and materials and debris. And uh, I don't know if that's a health department uh, issue or an inspectional services issue so that's all well, I have I'll, to address, say right I'll address that briefly John um, inspectional services do come under us as you probably know uh, the governor's order is basically limiting restaurants at this point to just outside dining um, the uh, executive order stipulated that the CEO of the town could help make those determinations about restaurants opening up. In the case of Winthrop, the CEO is actually not the town manager, but the town council president. Um, and uh, I believe uh, he is working with the board, uh, the licensure board in terms of uh, those operations, uh, particularly if there's anything dealing with alcohol. And uh, they have to comply with all of the appropriate guidelines in terms of Tables have to be at least six feet apart. There's a limit, I know, to no more than six people at a table, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So our inspectional services, who as part of their normal duty, does inspect all businesses in town that have food permits, which includes restaurants, will also be reviewing uh, the operations of any restaurants that have outdoor dining. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anyone else uh, would like to make a public comment? Uh, yes, I would if no one else is jumping in yet. I'll go in. Okay. <laughs> Julia here. And yeah, who's sorry. that? Uh, I, I'm going to speak as well, but whenever. Okay, yeah, we'll take them. We'll take them. Who's, who's, who's this now, gentlemen? Yes, so my name is Stephen Lutz. I am a Winthrop resident over at 150 Circuit Road. Um, okay. And I thank, you, thank you all for your time tonight and all the you know, activities that you guys have been doing uh, in these strange times that we're now in. Um, one positive I've seen from this spring is the reduction in airfare, sorry, you know, flights uh, from Logan and kind of right. noise and air. Uh, this seems much better from that. And I, I know there was a, a report put together with BU as well as some help from uh, our town manager, and I believe Meredith, in terms of public health um, and addressing 
public health needs here in Winthrop. And of course, one of those issues, as always, uh, the airport um, and Massport and, and dealing with that. And, and they proposed three recommendations. I, I'm sure you guys have seen this study or, or discussed it, um, but I, I may have missed those in previous meetings. But one of those recommendations actually doesn't require us dealing with Massport or the FAA and, and banging our head against a wall like we usually do as a town when, when dealing with those um, big operations. One, one thing in particular is uh, planting trees. They say recommendation number two is creating a biomass barrier. I think you all know, you know, the public benefits of uh, trees and what they can do for our air quality as well as noise, reducing noise five to 10 decibels. Um, and, and the impact that that could have on our town for a relatively, you know, affordable option, probably at, you know, a dollar per capita, most of which we could probably get through grants through the state. Um, and I'm just wondering if, you know, the Board of Health has explored some of these options um, or where they stand uh, kind of with uh, some of these recommendations that came out of this Metro Bridge report, um, which I, I know Austin Faison and Meredith um, helped out with. Um, and that's all. So thank you. Yep. So I'll, uh, did you, I'll let Astrid, did you want to say anything on the, the uh, what, what's been going on to some degree dealing with the environment and the airport particularly? Yeah, I can maybe briefly comment on this. So there is a, a tri-community initiative, the uh, North <clears throat> Suffolk um, uh, Health Collaborative, which includes the communities of uh, Revere, Chelsea, and Winthrop. And based on a um, survey that was done last year among residents of all three communities, the airport, airport noise and airport pol pollution came out, um, especially in Winthrop, as one of the top concerns among residents. So based on that, we, you know, we met uh, a few times now with between the three communities and uh, we are trying to figure out how we can approach that topic. Um, we're probably gonna, or it seems like we're pairing with uh, East Boston on that potentially, especially with a, uh, with a nonprofit group called Air Inc, um, which is uh, looking at these, um, these different things, for example, putting in HEPA filters into schools, et cetera, um, to fight pollution. But I think this tree uh, idea is great. And I think we should maybe include that in this agenda. I think that would be very, very cool. Um, we also applied to a, um, for a grant, um, and I forget the exact name of the, of the, uh, <coughs> the RFA that was put out, but it was, um, it was about addressing um, uh, pollution in, in the three communities, especially by the airport. And so I think this could be potentially a part of that if we do get funding from that, but we don't have a funding decision yet. Everything has been delayed, but apparently we will get to know that very soon. So that's where we stand on this. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I'm very happy that you want to engage with us on this. And I think the Board of Health is supportive of anything that we can do with limited funding the town has available to, to help our residents fight pollution. So, so two things. Um, I think the, the grant was a municipal grant, um, and I think to, there was some discussion about we were trying to get also get some money to put in uh, filters or maybe also maybe sensors yep. to me to do some measuring. But the objective other thing I might measurements. Say, yeah, the other thing I might say, Steve, is um, you know the town has gotten um, five hundred thousand dollars from. Uh, Massport, I believe it's for five years. I think it adds up to 2.500, 2.5 million. And and right now I know the win there's a foundation that's set up who who's given some grants out right now to particularly to some nonprofits that are assisting folks with food and some other issues uh, dealing with the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. But it might be uh, a worthy suggestion to suggest that maybe some of that money at some point could be used towards uh, planting some trees in town because uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I know I've seen reports in other countries where they've really taken a serious effort uh, on planting trees. So I think it's a great idea. Yeah, I agree. Well, thank you. So it's, it's Susan, I do have one question. I, I guess recent uh, reports I've read about, um, it sounds like we already have 
filters in the schools. Is that correct? No. Sorry, this is Julia. We, we do not have HEPA filters in our school. I've been in these conversations with uh, Mothers Out Front and Ari Inc. over the last couple of months. We do not have them. Right. And, yeah, I'm going to have to go back and see where I saw that document. I think there's one sensor for noise pollution at one of the schools. Yes. Right. No, no, something different. Okay. Okay. I'm going to research that as well. Thank you. Okay. And now I believe uh, Julia wanted to speak to us. I do, yeah. Um, and I, I wanted to speak to the bike safety uh, status uh, on the agenda. Do you want me to talk now? or? or yeah, why don't you talk now? I know you just sent sent us uh, <laughs> a, a proposal. Draft proposal, yeah. And just, so, I can just, so I'm going to look at it right now yeah, while you're talking. I can speak briefly to that. Um, yeah, so it's Julia Wallers here. I'm uh, one of the co-founding members of Bike Winthrop, our local sort of bike advocacy organization, and also the chair of the Transportation Advisory Committee. Um, and uh, very excited that the Board of Health contacted us last month about doing sort of a bike safety campaign based around wearing your helmet. Um, and that that's great, um, but that sort of gave us the idea to take that a little further and more comprehensively, particularly in a light of post-COVID-19, where health is front and center on everybody's lens and recognizing that biking has become an enormously um, appealing option uh, for people in, in a post-pandemic world, both here in Winthrop and nationwide. Um, so seeing an opportunity to have a more comprehensive approach to bike safety, not just on the individual level of wear your helmet, look both ways, you know, follow the rules of the road, but biking as a public health response to a global pandemic because biking is a physically distant way to travel, um, both for recreation, for transportation, for essential trips, um, it's affordable and it's an alternative to driving. And also, I think I said this in my proposal, um, an alternative to, to transit, which people are still very afraid to, to use, um, as well as walking where sidewalks can be crowded. So sort of elevating this notion of biking as a public health response is something that I think would be a great partnership with the Board of Health um, between either TAC or Bike Winthrop and the Board of Health and um, coming up with a comprehensive strategy to set out some guidelines not just to cyclists, but to everyone who uses the road and how we can make this a safe transportation option, both safe in terms of, you know, don't fall and bang your head or get hit by a car, but safe in terms of don't contract a, a disease because biking offers that as an option. And that's really a new way of looking at it. And it's also an approach that can be backed up, um, you know, by the fact that we have a nationwide bike surge uh, shortage, uh, you know, people flocking to biking in ways we have never seen um, in our lifetimes, you know, partially because people are home and, you know, wanting to explore their neighborhoods more and not wanting to get in the car and, hey, where's that old bike in my in my basement, and, you know, sort of dusting them off and then realizing, oh, I don't actually know how to ride or I don't know the rules <laughs> of the road. So there's a safety element there, but there's also the safety element of people are going to start going back to work. And um, so I work for a, actually a global nonprofit and we have partners in China in all of our Chinese partner cities, biking and driving are both on the rise because people are afraid to take transit and they're afraid to be around other people. Um, and this is also backed up in our own massing polling results that people basically just want to travel in ways that are solitary. And biking is one of those ways. So anything we can do as a community to make biking safer is a direct public health response. And I think we have an opportunity to work together and um, come up with something that's comprehensive and effective through this lens. Sorry, that was a mouthful. Yeah, well, you, you did it well. Uh, I, I, was, I always thought they used to say, you know, once you learn how to ride a bike, you never forget. Isn't that what they used to always say? Um, well, to ride 10 feet, but to ride on the road is sort of Yeah, I know, I, I know. Yeah, we have these know, recreational, I, and I've heard from John Morgan um, on, the, on the call that he's seen or he's experiencing many more people biking, which is great, but they're not stopping for him. Right. They don't necessarily know how to be a responsible cyclist, you know, how to look for cars, how to look for pedestrians. So that's absolutely a key element of it. Um, but it's also the responsibility on motorists that, you know, are going to win in a collision no matter what. So we need the educational um, element of this is, is critical and should be targeted at all users of the road. So I'm going to stick with this. Um because I noticed looking at your proposal and you had some particular issues on the campaign, um, you know, stats on biking around the world, particularly data from Winthrop, various safety tips and bike routes. Um, 
So do we? Do you have some of that data or, or suggested bike routes? Oh, yeah, actually, and it's good timing because um, the town retained a consultant to do a bike safety connectivity study using this sort of modeling approach to looking at a low stress a low stress network so what are the streets that are low stress that are safer right now and where are the gaps in connections and this of course overlaid perfectly with um transportation advisory committee's proposal last year it's, it's nothing we didn't already know what are the safe streets for biking where are the missing connections but it's now backed up through data in a different way so we have that in draft form we reviewed it with the consultants two weeks ago so we can really use that to put forth a data-driven safety map for biking in Winthrop that actually gets people where they're trying to go also, which was a, a missing piece of what the consultant had done so far. It's like, where are the schools? Where are the destinations? You know, where are people going? And let's make sure our routes connect there. So are you, are you making that data available at a particular point? I would, I would assume as soon as it's complete. That was a draft that we reviewed and then... Um, they should be providing their final deliverable to the town manager. This is something that because I'm, you have. know, I mean, if you would like the board of health to take a take some type of role, I'm trying to figure out timing and and exactly when when we can do something because we obviously can vote uh, to do something and then and then then there's always the implementation and how how does it get from a vote to to being something whether it's you know in the in the papers on WCAT et cetera et cetera. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to figure out a time frame uh, and how to get something, some deliverable produced. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, well, when it's been a longstanding goal of Bike Winter Fun Tech to have a tangible map, a bike map, and now we have the, the capacity to do that that's rooted in, you know, in engineering, which, which it really doesn't need to be, but it is now. Um, and we can have that as something that would be great um, promoted through the Board of Health as like this is this is a health response for Winthrop. Here's, you want to ride a bike, great. That's good for your health, you know, both as in general, the cardiovascular health, but also, you know, for everyone's clean air and also to, you know, lower your risk of uh, disease transmission. And here's the safe ways to go about doing it, you know, the safe streets and also tips. So really building on, you know, the graphic we did last month for, you know, kids wearing mm -hmm. your helmet, that's great, that's a start, but we can really build on that, I think. Um, Maybe you guys even have money in your budget for collateral or graphics. <laughs> we, don't, we don't have a budget. For, for oh, okay. we, don't, uh -huh. we don't have a budget even to get business cards. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. Okay. So well, we have zero. Um, yeah. It, the ride share mitigation funds um, are what I know the town manager was planning to use for striping, mm -hmm. restriping the town, and that would include any pavement markings. For sharrows or signage about share the road or if there is potential to, to like brand this network like that this is so that if you're biking you know you are on you know the safe bike winthrop route um whether you're trying to get somewhere or just trying to get to take a ride because you're working from home stuck at home or you know in, if we go back into lockdown but you still want to move safely this is a way to do it so i'm just thinking today being june 9th and i'm looking at Particularly when, when you have in contents of the campaign, it, what, what, what it strikes me obviously is whatever data you have for your bike survey, which I presume is it, and, and whatever the suggested bike routes, if you have a particular date or that you think that uh, that would be available, then we could plan on maybe doing something around that. As you yeah. probably know, the, the Board of Health, we normally meet only once a month, but obviously if we decide to vote that we want to do something, we can obviously do stuff between meetings. It doesn't always have to be at meetings. Meetings are generally for the purposes of taking votes and making decisions. But mm -hmm. if we make a decision to do something, then we can obviously implement it between meetings. Yeah, so do you have that a would be great. But do you I mean, I, I need to find out when this deliverable is, but I don't think we need to wait for that. I think that the educational campaign can happen with or without that. Just a promotion of of safe how to bike safely how to use the road safely whether you're biking or not well i i i, I agree with what you're saying but i'm just trying to some oftentimes information drives a message so if we have data and we have routes so we're saying we can say you know obviously bike safety makes sense here's what winter what the winter community has said that they want to do Here's the routes that we think people should follow, and mm -hmm. and and that's that's that, and also and also quite frankly, just trying to juggle all the different things that we're trying to do, um, 
you know, to figure out, okay, it's, it's much easier if we said, for instance, okay, let's plan to do something at the end of the month, then we can put it kind of on a schedule as opposed to just saying, well, we can't do everything immediately. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, so, I wish I knew that. I wish I knew the date. It was almost two weeks ago that we saw the draft, and we came yeah. back with a bunch of feedback, and have so not heard since. <laughs> so why don't we? I'm gonna. Why don't we uh, su suggest, from at least from my perspective, that we would definitely the board, and I'll make this in from a motion. The bo board would like to definitely do something in terms of promoting biking as a public health uh, and safe issue in the town, and um, we'll work on an implement you know some kind yeah. of a communication campaign as soon as that information that you send us is comes available. yeah and i i would encourage you to frame it as a response because we're into we're going to this phase of recovery it's public health recovery it's okay. economic recovery and where does safe biking fit into that that's what we're gonna, we are responding to this crisis by making bike a, biking a safer choice i think that's okay. the powerful connection okay like we can do that yeah. Any any well, discussion, uh, Astrid? Or I, it's, it's Susan. Yes. Um, so Julia, I was researching uh, the other day, and I, it's funny. I came up with um, a plan, Walk Winthrop, and a plan for a oh, more yeah. walkable uh, yep. town. I think yep. that was done ten years ago. Is yes, right? there's two of them. Twenty eleven, and the, 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 the Conway School of Landscape Design and MMPC. Yes, yes, that's correct. That's I've been correct. begging the town to oh, put that oh, on the right. website for years. <laughs> and what happened to that? It's on the shelf, um, and actually, the, the, we used that to form our bike recommendations last year. Like, we are not trying to ever recreate the wheel. So much of this work has already been done for us. We just oh, need so to you took mine. that as a template and just um, and, and, and got, well, just built on. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Oh wow. We, we paid consultants to do this stuff, and we just paid another one to do it again, but using modeling. Oh, my. oh boy. So, Susan, well, if we have okay. a if we have a walk Winthrop. Uh, thing. Why don't you put that on our agenda for next month? <laughs> well, I guess walk it's walk, awesome. um, bike and biking. It's well, I'm just saying, but yeah. I mean, yeah, the Greenway. Actually they're plan. they're related, but they're also they're related, but yeah. they're separate yeah. Yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, and, so and this, what this new report does month. is it adds a very specific safety element to it of like categorizing every street in Winthrop according to its level of safety in terms of how, what is the traffic volume and what is the speed of traffic? Because those are the two biggest, you know, safety factors for, for biking. So it does right. it does add a new a new layer to what's been done. I don't want to say it was a waste of money. It, it really brings new strength to the arguments we've already been making. Absolutely, and, and yeah. things change, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Great. so it's a new tool in the box. Astrid, okay. do you have any comments? No, but I'm, I'm totally for it. I think it's a great okay. idea. I think we should absolutely. hop on this. I mean, do something good out of this so whole mess. Yeah. Gonna, I'm gonna, let's, let's, uh, we're going to ask Julia, because she's enthusiastic, obviously, about this, to, to get the data and the bike route information to us, and, mm -hmm. and then and let's plan on doing something ASAP once we get that. Yeah, yeah, I can be, I can be your, your liaison on this. That sounds great. Thank yeah. you. And look around, you're talking about how many uh, blue bikes there are in town. You know, blue bikes that are people coming from East Boston. I've seen them. All I noticed over. the green. I noticed the green bike down by Deer Island the oh, other day. Oh, those are it, those are obsolete. <laughs> yeah. But so how long has that been sitting there? <laughs> Forever and yeah, Lime's Lime's not even in, operating anymore. So yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, but blue bikes. So Julia, do, do we have a new contract with someone else or? No, we don't have saying? anything. We have yeah. we don't have bike share anymore. Yeah. Do we have any plans for it? No. No, we don't. Okay. Are you, um, would you be in favor of having a plan? Oh, or? of course. Um, there's there's a variety of reasons why docked bike share okay. is not feasible for Winthrop. Um, the, the town manager okay. and I have discussed this a lot. The stations are very, very expensive. Um, okay. That's why dockless was such a great option for us. It's, it's no cost to the municipality, but there's not currently a dockless provider serving the region. That doesn't mean there won't be. Okay. <laughs> okay. The whole Thank industry you. is kind of in upheaval. Um, the dockless bike. Okay. Thank you. Do we have any other public comments at this time? No, but Bill, are you did you do a motion? Do we need to um, go back to well, that? Gonna, yeah. Or? Okay. Well, uh, yeah. I'll make a motion as as I discussed that the board will pursue a bi safe biking as a public health response for Winthrop. Uh, so I'll make that in the form of a motion. 
Second. Any, for, okay. any discussion? No, aye. All, aye. All, all in favor. Aye. Okay, yep. great. Thank you, Julio. I got to hop off, but thank you, everyone. Okay. Looking forward to working with you. Thanks, great. Julio. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Um, any other public comment? Yes, John Morgan. Again. Yes, I'd like to follow up on Julia's. Uh, we spoke briefly Sunday at the beach regarding the bicyclists. And I'm a totally blind citizen here in the town of Winthrop, and I do quite a bit of walking. And I uh, at one time went to a TSAC meeting, and I was able to speak to the Deputy Chief Goodwin regarding, you know, motorists not stopping in the crosswalks. Uh, this also applies now with uh, bicycles, mm -hmm. and I don't want to put a damper on anything. I mean, because I I rode a bike for 45 years, and I and I wish I still could. And uh, but with uh, uh, speaking to Julia, I'm sure that she'll include anything in uh, bike safety and education for looking out for pedestrians. For the pedestrian. Yeah, so. I agree with you. I agree with you. I think that's that's mm -hmm. that's important. So we'll we'll, uh, we'll work on that, uh, John. Thank you. Okay. Any uh, any other public comments? Okay, I'll uh, close that section of the the meeting. I'm sorry, Bill. Just to know, for the record, I did not receive any email, public comment, uh, email. Well, I noticed something right now on my on the screen. It says chat. There are four in the chat. Do you know what oh. that is, Astrid? Yeah, you can chat. You can use the chat feature too if you have a question or something. I, I've been monitoring it, but it was just from basically the beginning of the meeting, so nothing, nothing acute. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, I just wondered because um, I haven't been following that. Okay, so no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just checking my emails again to make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, Stephen Lux, are you still on the line? Yeah, he's here. He was here. He was talking to us oh, okay. about about okay, the trees. Okay. All right. So he did send in an email at 5:35, um, hoping to make a comment about with the public health and the report put forth by BU. Okay, so we've covered that. Thank you, Stephen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so um, and the next is a review of minutes. So uh, Susan sent us a couple sets of meet minutes. Um, we have minutes from the meeting of uh, May 21st. Uh, which which we we had a couple comments that I sent back, and and then uh, oh, Susan also okay. sent us some uh, minutes of the emergency board meeting on June second, which I thought looked fine. Yes, they look great. Okay, all right, great. Thank you, and Astrid, thank you for your summary. That helped. Yeah. Too. So um, um, one, I will revisit the language that you commented on bill and correct that okay so I'll, I'll make a motion that we improve the approve the may 20 uh, first minutes with 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 corrections and then also the june uh, second meeting as is second all in right. favor aye, aye. okay Good. So that's that one. Now, uh, I don't know if Al called in. I, I, I didn't see him calling in. So I don't know if we've received anything further on um, the uh, 59 Cottage. Since Al's not here, I presume we haven't. I emailed him today as you said. Yeah, I saw that. Asked again, and I haven't heard back. I didn't see any um, in response. So we'll mm -hmm. hold on that, mm -hmm. and I put, and I didn't see anything on the roundup, so I presume we're holding on that, right? Yes, mm -hmm. I did not get to that. So yeah. We'll hold on. Thank you. Not a problem. So the next item is uh, park at Harborview, and I know I think Meredith is on. Uh, I drafted uh, finally uh, 
juggling everything else. Um, I've drafted an order for you a little while ago, and I sent to you for for review. Did you? I, I don't know if you had a chance I to look at it yet. To look, I haven't had a chance to look at it. Once, well, sure. well once you, can you open it up and look at it? Sure, sure. It's pretty much basically based on uh, Meredith's incident report, and also um, some the way uh, Astrid wrote up her email to uh, the family of a resident. Okay. You had a chance to look at it, Astrid? Yeah. Oh. Uh, I did not. When did you send it? Just before the meeting? I, I sent it. it now. I sent it at 548. Okay. <laughs> right before oh. the meeting. Sorry. <laughs> just before or just after Susan sent the emergency <laughs> minutes? Minute. Yes. Okay. Could you just give us a minute? I'm yeah, I'll give you a minute because I think we should. I want to be able to go ahead with it if we if we can do that. Okay, let me just uh, quickly read it. I have yeah. um, just a two-page email letter. Okay. Uh, okay. Here we go. It looks good. Wait one minute, please. Yep. Yep. Good. I do have one question. Um, let's see. Uh, one, two. Third paragraph. Um, is there actually a nurse in the facility? It says director. Yes. There is. Yes, there is. There's a nurse. Oh, I, oh, I didn't know that. Sent an email to the administrator and nurse of the your facility. Yeah, the, the, mm -hmm. I looked at. Well, that's how she phrased it in her incident report. And then when I looked at the email that she sent, <laughs> it was basically like administrator at nurse at. Okay. No, there is oh, a I'm nurse. Not, I didn't know that. Okay, very good. I'm fine with it, Bill. Okay, so. Um, That's my chair, great. And secretary, great, of Elder Affairs. Excellent. So, what I'll do is uh, I'll send a, uh, an email uh, later to Al so that he can serve it and uh, obviously send it to uh, Elder Affairs. And uh, I have the address that Astrid gave me to uh, Frontier. Great. Okay. We can do that. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, Meredith, you're here, I presume. She is here. I'm sorry, uh, I'm just unmuting she... myself. There you go. No, it's okay. Listen, I'm sure you're either getting a bite to eat or working on something uh, yeah. among all the, diff the variety of things that you're doing. So any particular updates at this point that you want to give us, reg particularly regarding PARC? Um, so I spoke with their director today, and we reviewed their um, their um, infection control manual. They've done their isolation procedure for those that have tested positive um, at this point. And then um, we're just trying to decide if retesting the memory care unit in about 10 days would be a good idea, um, particularly just because it's really hard to isolate the folks there. Um, so I'm just looking into that. I'm going to get some guidance from DPH. Okay. So just, um, so that's really been the extent of my interaction with them so far in the last like four days. Okay. 
Okay, can I add yeah. something? Um, sure. I have received a call today actually from uh, another resident's uh, family um, who were very concerned about the practices there and also um, were had encountered several instances of one particular person, I'm assuming it's the same person that you encountered, uh, not wearing a mask still to this day. And uh, I don't know, um, I don't know what other action we can take. And I'm certainly happy to go in there with you and do a mm -hmm. personal education yeah. again. Um, yeah. I also heard that they they haven't really had a, a staff meeting since these incidents happened, which I find very troubling. I think they should have a st staff meeting ASAP to re-educate and train their staff and, and inform them all of all this was what was happening. So I don't know if, if that's something we can facilitate um, by going in I there. Definitely offer, yeah. <clears throat> but I think it would be uh, very helpful to the families in there and also to uh, the staff there to mm -hmm. really understand the importance of wearing masks, especially in this, uh, you know, service to to um, to the elderly, very yeah. vulnerable population. Yes, so, very true. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm happy to go in there with you and and provide some kind of I don't know reinforcement of, of our view here, and it's not yeah. only the order, and uh, just I mean. It seems to be an ongoing problem, and it doesn't seem to be. Uh, yeah, and I think it's a nice follow-up, especially following kind of uh, um, a punitive action, right? So it's always Correct. good to have some sort of punitive action that is then offered by, all right, so let's get past this and let's help help us all get to a better space. I think it's a good practice. So yeah. I'll follow up with the uh, administrator tomorrow, Astrid, and I'll CC you on an email and see okay. if fantastic and then also on it. yeah and could you also update everybody on the uh, on the testing that was done sure so we ended up testing um i don't know the direct numbers off the top of my head um so 17 residents in memory care about 30 and then another um 70 so about just over 100 folks um oh wow between, between um monday no, Tuesday and Thursday. Um, and thankfully, you know, I am so grateful for the people that exist in this town because when we did the larger scale testing on Tuesday, they didn't have the test strips available. We reached out to a bunch of um, a bunch of networks to um, get the test strips available. So because we had a EMT crew going in and also um, a firefighter that was coming down and getting paid overtime to help with it. So um, it was pretty important that we got like that we got it done that day. So we were able to pull it all off. Um, and there were three residents of memory care and one staff member that tested positive and then one staff member um, in the assisted living and um, independent living side. Okay. So is that a total of five? Is that correct? And the nine. Um, what was that? Sorry. Is it a to that's a total of five positive? Yes. Is that correct? Okay. Were any um, were any test results uh, unclear or have to be repeated? Actually, or two of them were inconclusive. Inconclusive. That is the word I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, are they going to be repeated? Yeah, they were told that they should go and have it repeated. Okay. Would that be that staff? Uh, yeah. Sorry. Would that and I'm okay. And I'm assuming the staff that were positive were um were asymptomatic. Yeah, they're asymptomatic okay. and they've been out of work for um, they'll be out of work for 14 days and then with yep. a double negative for returning. Right. Okay. Great, thank you so much for your hard work on this. I think oh, we've, no, uh, thank you guys. we've basically, thank we you. have basically uh, avoided an outbreak here. I just yeah, want that to make that abundantly yeah. clear, abundantly clear for the second time. that this, for is, the second this, is, time. this is great work by um, by you, Meredith, and the uh, Department of Health here. This is, this yeah, is really yeah, great. Thank you. I'm grateful that the people that we work with, I mean, I literally yeah. called um, our EMT provider, Mike Baranka, um, who is the head of Action Ambulance, and he, you know, 
within 12 hours was like he you know put a crew over with me um and the crew was great they had never done swabbing before it's under their licensing to do point of care testing like that um but it's nerve-wracking so we did like a real-time training we took about 30 minutes and you know um i had a video from the journal of um, the new england journal of medicine that was really good and we went over that and got them comfortable and then um Captain Lopez from the fire department um, is always so helpful um, whenever I ask him to do any of these crazy missions. So he, um, and so it, it was, it's, I'm grateful for the people that we, we have working in this town. That's great. Thank you. So Meredith, um, the people that have tested positive, so you understand correctly, will they be tested again until there are two negatives? Is that correct? The P, the re, yeah the um the staff and then the um yeah okay what about yeah, the residents yeah and then one of the residents is already tested negative another one is currently in isolation so um, how soon do you retest um it depends on the two of them are placed outpatient so um I wouldn't test more than five days after the initial just because um you know. No, People tend to test positive for upwards of sometimes 30 days because it's oh. testing the presence of versus the infectiousness of. And so, then again, oh, the presence because they shed, the shedding, right? Yeah. yeah. So we don't know if it's shedding necessarily. Um, right. But okay. we know that it's present. Okay. Are you comfortable with park isolation protocol that they have in place? So they're um, isolating how many people? They're isolating... Are they yeah, they put, the inconclusive? Do they isolate the inconclusive? That was a staff member. Um, the two inconclusives oh, were those staff, were staff. Yeah. Those were staff. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the three, um, are they in isolation? Are you comfortable with Park's isolation policy? Only one of them is currently, only one is currently in the facility um, that is in isolation. The other two are oh. at outside facilities now. Um, and why? So why was that? Oh, why is that? They, well, because they had been um, transported for um, to inpatient facilities. Oh, after the yeah. testing. Oh, boy. Okay. No, before oh, the right. testing. Okay. Yeah. They were tested at uh, hospitals. They were one was tested at, at MGH. I see. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Was Al, did Al do any um, unannounced visits? Um, I don't one? know. I um, I was with Al a lot today, and I forgot to ask him, actually. That's okay. That's okay. So, so Meredith, you. Meredith, if you could just communicate with Al, then I'll be sending um, the order, and, and you guys can coordinate the, your good cop, bad cop uh, routine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> him, you being the good cop and him being the bad cop. <laughs> I, I was um, probably kind of the bad cop on this one too. <laughs> well, you I know, but you can. I think if it's you're... very. I think it's very, very important. That I think it's great what you're going to be doing because they have staff coming in, new staff coming in all the time, and mm -hmm. who knows what type of training they're getting. So I think it's yeah. great. Yeah. Are there are there videos available for training purposes when you guys aren't available, or there must be something. You would hope. <laughs> Well, this Frontier Management runs, I don't know, what, 75 facilities across the country or something like this? They should have all kinds of stuff. This is not like they it's a, this is exactly. like it's like one facility. This is... So something to follow up on when you're out there. Yeah, I mean, I think see, they're... Yeah, sorry. We can do I yeah, see what? They should be available on orientation, so thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I'm saying, I mean, this is a huge company of uh, frontier management so they should have all kinds of policies and procedures because they're dealing with this at all their facilities i'm sure right did you see anything in their um isolation i'm sorry in their infection control manual about cleaning procedures like the rooms of the residents that tested positives are they is there specific protocols how they're cleaned that was one of the questions i got from the yeah. family members um... Just go back. I feel like I've read a lot of documents today, particularly <laughs> around. But we don't have um, to. 
we don't have to uh, discuss that today, but you know, just we just yeah something for and us to Astrid, follow you, up on. You, yeah, and Esther, I think you were interested in getting a copy of it as well, right? Oh yeah, yeah I can send that to you right yeah. now. Yeah, great. That would Thank be you. Good. Thanks. That's fine. I just want to follow up with the family that asked. Yeah, and, and no, I, I appreciate that. As well, please. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to depend on the board, on, on, on the doctor and the nurse okay. to do all the right things. Nurses. Okay. Sounds good. Um, well, I sit on the board, one nurse, but oh, obviously correct. Meredith that's as well. Correct. But, that's correct. Um, so uh, we're done with past business now. Uh, so now the next uh, item is to deal with... Uh, public possible public hearing or definitely a public hearing I shouldn't say possible public hearing um, dealing with Winthrop Square Market and the uh, jewel sale um, we had as you know at our meeting on um, our last meeting I think it was what the 21st I believe it was um, that we we uh, dealt with the incident report um, filed by, um, I think, is it Sergeant um, Peterson? Or is it your officer? I don't know if it's Sergeant or Officer. Who was it? It's office, police Officer Samantha Peterson. And I believe uh, Detective Rogers is on, the, is on the call here as well, I think. So anyways, we, we had the um, discussion at our meeting uh, on May 21st, we discussed the incident report from Samantha Peterson regarding the sales uh, of the jewel. Uh, and after discussion, we voted to find them uh, a fine of thousand for the first to find a fine of two thousand for the second offense. And we also voted to suspend their tobacco sales permit for seven days. Uh, that was initially going to take place. Um, for the period uh, June 8th through June 14th. We did receive an appeal notice from the owner. Uh, it was uh, received, he dated, it was dated March, May 28th. Uh, Sharon had forwarded it to us. So I communicated that we would have this issue on our Board of Health meeting tonight as a public hearing. Uh, the owner uh, asked whether or not he had to be there um, and whether the suspension would start. I, I communicated him that he could t attend the meeting at, and there was information for participation uh, based on the town website through Zoom or telephone and that um, the suspension would be on hold until after the public hearing. And uh, so I don't so I sent him a second notice to basically notice him that there would be um, the uh, public hearing tonight at six o'clock, and he could he was requested to attend if, if he could do so. Um, I did receive, um, and I communicated him earlier today uh, that what the uh, town website was. He sent me an email at six o'clock, basically said did he have to do anything? And I said, well, he can call him to the meeting if, if he desires. So I don't know if uh, Mr. Mahmoud is on the call here or not. Um, there is a number here. Um, I don't know who the, the 543-4119. Is that, uh, that, is that Mr. Morgan? I'm sorry, John Morgan, yes. Yeah, that's more, okay. I thought that was, but I just wanna make sure. So I don't see where he's called in to the meeting. We don't have any communication on the chat or anything else, right? From him. No. So, um, so I, just in terms of, so having this uh, hearing, and I'll call the hearing to order, which is at uh, seven o'clock and to note that, uh, in addition to myself, uh, we have obviously Astrid Wines, the Vice Chair, and Susan McGuire, the member. Um, since Mr. Mahmoud has not 
called in, I, and I did send everybody his appeal um, request. So let me read that into the record. So we have that. So he said, uh, here's what he said. He said, uh, dear, dear Chairman, this is a very tough and unprecedented, unprecedented time for us. I stayed at home for quarantine. Because of my absence, I decided to hire a temporary employee who was willing to work during the circumstances. However, he made a big mistake during his working period. As soon as I heard about this, I fired him for his mistakes. I received a violation letter and a fine today. It's very difficult for me right now because of COVID-19. My business is declining. It's very hard for me to feed my family and pay bills. I do not know what is going to happen to our business in the future. Would you please be able to reconsider the $3,000 fine? I am very worried about where I will be able to find the money. Please let me know about how I can handle this situation. So that was his appeal letter. Um, I think it is noteworthy, at least from my perspective, um, that I don't think it's a question of, uh, in terms of the act as passed by the governor, it's a question of whether we have any discretion as to whether or not um, we can find someone. I think it's a, it's a situation where, and Bonnie, um, if you want to weigh in in a minute, I'll let you also, but I believe the way the state law is written, it's basically that um, it's a mandated firing, a fining situation of $1,000 for the first offense and 2000 for a second offense. It's not a question of, you know, we, we may do it. I think it's a mandatory situation. The, um, I think there is some discretion regarding um, the suspension, although, although I'm not, I'd have to look at that as well in a, in a, more carefully. But I think there, I'm not sure there is any discretion on the mandatory finding. Bonnie, do you have any, any comment on that? I, 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 I don't, Bill. Um, I did read somewhere. I can't remember now where, um, but it did say that, um, oh, I know, the letters to the retailers that we got to send out says that um, the Board of Health cannot lower those fines. Oh, uh, can I you don't know that? if that was directly stated. Um, let me see where. Let's I'm see. sorry, I would have to so, find out. For, oh, here it is. Local cities and towns cannot lower these fines. Oh. But this is this was originally, I think, from DJ, but I can double check on that if you want me to. Can you send us copies, um, Bonnie, of that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, this Please. one, I'm reading it now, but it's... it's um, Yes, I'll, I'll send you a copy of that, um, but I'm not sure that that was the final word. Um, it well, was forwarded whatever, whatever, to me by my counterpart. Whatever so let me go directly to DJ. Yeah, whatever the retail is received, uh, we'd like a copy as well. That would be great. So my reading of because this was a memo that you'd sent us at one point, and it basically had a number of par paragraphs. It had... It had a section to health directors, and then it had a section to retailers, and then it had a section to clerk magistrates, mm -hmm. et cetera. But the, one of the language was, it's, and I'm quoting it, so the newly amended Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 277, Section 6, Subsection D, reads as follows. A person who violates this section shall be punished by a mm. fine of 1000 for the first offense, 2000 for a second offense, and 5000 for a third or subsequent offense. So again, when it says they shall be punished, it's not may be punished. Right. So when you have yep. a, when you have a shall, it's it's automatic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Yes. Yeah. Um, now, just while I was mentioning this, I, I have I think a, uh, so that's in terms of the two fines. In terms of the suspension, I think what our regulations because the suspension issue comes down to the, our local regs and our local regs say that 
Um, so our so our local regs, which says, uh, and these were lower fines, of course, not for the for the vaping, but in the case of a first violation, a fine of three hundred dollars. In the second, uh, case of a second violation within 36 months of the date of current violation, a fine of $300 in the tobacco sales permit shall be suspended for seven consecutive days. So again, now that I'm reading it, again, it says shall. Yeah. So, so these regulations, and I think we had this discussion at one point a couple of years ago when, when we had a situation where one of the um, retailers had not reviewed their permit. Mm-hmm. And there was a discussion about what do we have any any leeway? And basically, what I said back then, and I think this the case is now, when you have these these laws or regulations written with a shell there, we're basically ordered to do so. Right. Mm-hmm. The reason I'm a little confused is because um, I know that different times throughout the course of being in this position. Um, retailers have appealed their tickets and gone to court with those appeals and 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 judges or um, hearing officers at courts did lower things but um, but I agree I mean shall means shall it doesn't mean may and that was one of the reasons that um, the model regulations before even the state regulations uh, changed that wording to shall instead of may so I think you, you, you know, have, have the authority and I don't know if it's the responsibility to keep it that amount or not, but it certainly sounds like it. And if you want me to check with CJ, um, I'll be happy to do that. Yeah. I mean, I think, I, I think it's pretty, it's pretty clear. Um, I would agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't, I, I think that's, you know, it's obviously not okay. a situation necessary. We're looking to, okay. to do something that's beyond what's in the scope of the law. But I think, in terms of what, what's there, um, we don't have really any any leeway. Mm-hmm. So um, I don't know if there's anything else anybody else wants to to say. Um, I did. I had one thing, uh, Susan. Um, Bonnie, what would you advise about education? So I was doing some research. This is not only a violation of our town regulation, but it's state regulation as well as federal. Um, what about education? Can we require them to... Um, get more education and get education for any uh, staff that they employ? Well, we can't, they're already required to do that. So um, what you could do is uh, some communities have um, a form that they make the retailer sign when they come to get a permit in particular um, that says I have trained all of my employees and then um, they have their employees sign it and keep it in a file. So um, if you wanted to, we could, you know, most people are not enforcing that, but you could. And it could be that when I come in to inspect, I ask to see those um, those affidavits that the employees have been trained to. And I certainly can go in and train well, I'm not going into any stores right at the right moment, now. but Correct. Right. I, you're right. But I can certainly, when I can, um, train him, and as to how to train his employees. I would yeah. suggest that we do that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. What do you do, what, Susan? I would suggest that when uh, Bonnie is when face-to-face visits are permissible that you do a face-to-face training with the retailer. He is responsible for not only his sales, but all employed under him. Right. So 
I yeah, well, I think I mean I think he I think he knows that, but certainly we can we can. Well, we he can... may know it, but are they really doing it? And actually, maybe Bonnie is. Maybe you ask him to show you show and tell. How are you mm-hmm. training your employees? And start there, and then yeah. you re-educate them on what should be done. Mm-hmm. I think that's I think that's a good plan, and I also think it will. Um, you know, when this ha- if if this happens again, you know, I hope not. Then we can refer to that as well and say you agree to do yes. the training, and even <clears throat> just agreeing to it, um, maybe in writing, would be fine. And I would even say, like, if he does that, um, I, I don't want to make a motion at this point, but I I would consider maybe um, not doing the suspension um, if he does well, agree guess- to that, but. I don't know if we have any option there, um, because we again, we don't. We don't on the, uh, on the suspension either. Well, Sorry, it I says we had, an, for, we had no option on the uh, on the on the fine. Well, time. even our even our regs say for a second mm-hmm. for a second offense, it, it, they not only do they get fined, but there shall be a suspension. Because mm-hmm. um, okay. I just read it. It says. Um, Here. Well, then uh, why is there an appeal process? <laughs> well, there's an appeal know. process because you can, well, you know, I mean, it can be an appeal process. If, you, if you, I think I think you could, yes, I think the argument would yeah. have, you can have an appeal based if the facts are, are wrong. Yeah, I don't think okay. you can have an appeal based on the amount of the fine or the action. Right. You know, not that somebody, you know, does win that, but it, but it, of course, the dollar amounts are different, but but the, but the section it says that in the case of a second violation within 36 months of the date of the current violation, a fine of $300 right. and the tobacco sales permit shall be suspended for seven days. Mm-hmm. So, um, okay, I don't think we have we have any option there. Well, but mm-hmm. but but is is there um, um, what I was going to say, Bonnie is. Um, is there something that you could send him by email? Sure. In terms of education, because because we do he did email he is on the emails. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe you I found could... a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot available online. I did look earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I think if we if you emailed him some information in terms of education and training, then it would be immediate, as opposed okay. to mm-hmm. down the road. Um, That'd be great, Bonnie. Thank you. You're um, welcome. So, Bill, I do empathize with um, his position about where he's at economically. Um, can we consider a repayment plan on the fine? Is that something we might consider? Um, well, um, yeah. I mean, I think I think we could. Um, yeah, I, I think we could. Um, that's a good suggestion, Susan. Um, I don't think there is um, a require. We can loosen up on the requirement on the 21 day thing. Okay. Yeah, I think I think that. What would you, what would you propose um, in terms of a payment of the fine? Oh God. Bonnie, have you been uh, faced with this before? <laughs> no, never. You know, it, I mean, the whole situation is very new and you know we're all trying to figure it out so no i never came across this before so how about how about i'll make um so do we have uh how when he when he um do we know um can you find out bonnie when you get a permit is it an annual permit yes i know al's on the phone al's on the line here too do you do you know when our when our um, permits go out for renewal? I know I see Al's name Muted. on there. Al, you? Yes, Bill. Do you need me? Yes. So we're particularly dealing with the uh, Winter Square Market issue. Yes, I know I'm very well. I was, I've been listening for some reason. I, my phone was dead, and I joined like six, seven minutes. That's late. okay. It's been, been blowing off the 
blowing off the hook today between restaurants try, trying to open and other yeah. going around town. I know you. Um, we do issue them yearly. I just, if you ask me the month, I'll have to hang myself. Sharon knows, but they do go out yearly, and I think they just, I think they do to go out in the next month, or, month or two. But we do issue those those permits yearly. Tobacco. Is that what you're asking for? Tobacco permits? Yes. Just fading in yeah. and out. Yes. Yes. So what They're I on a yearly basis. I can email you tomorrow okay. exact dates. Yeah. But they go at the same that, time. Could, yeah. So here's what I would suggest, kind of the board, and maybe you'd give me as chair some discretion on this. Mm -hmm. What I would suggest Absolutely. is we ask him to make some payment prior to him getting his permit renewed for a year. I think that's a great idea, Bill. And yeah. then the balance would have to be paid off during the coming year. Because, mm -hmm. And if it's not paid off, he wouldn't get renewed for the following year. That's awesome. How does that sound? I think, I think it's a great idea. I think it's an excellent idea. I think that it'll really send a message to him to really be, you know, on on his toes on how to conduct himself. Because I was in there, you know. Obviously, I delivered the the the, the citation and the letter for you, Bill, um, that that you had signed. But prior, like two weekends prior to that, you know, because I own a piece of property of Somerset that I'm going to be moving to, I happened to walk over to the store with my son, and he grabbed me because he realized who I was, and he was crying with tears, and you know, I don't want this. Uh Boys, all this blah 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 blah, and I said to him, I said this has been a frequent thing ongoing with you. I said you have to answer the board of health now, and it's going to be pretty much up to them on how they move forward with you. And I just kind of dead ended it with him on that point. But he knows he's wrong. The gentleman knows he's wrong, and I don't know if it's definitely people that work for him or himself is involved. But as you know, we've had problems again. I stated at the last meeting with this with this store where we've had to shut it down a couple times. You know, just for you know, for um, for egress, egress, right? Yeah. Well, well, Susan, it was egress, and it was like expired products too, and not oh. handling their food properly. So it was a couple of things that we had to close them down for. Okay. Um, egress was one of the big things, and obviously, you know, outdated food was another huge thing, and cleanliness wasn't an issue with them. But um, I, I, it's just in 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 another thing to to back up is they changed owners. In like the last three years, like frequently, like you know, one owner, then all of a sudden six months later, they're coming in with a new owner. Then six months prior after that, there's a new owner. So they've never consistently been the same owner either. I don't know if it's the people that are involved in the store and their group that they just keep changing for. Maybe maybe they're doing something like that. I'm not sure. Maybe that should be another type of investigation. I don't know. But they really have changed ownership a lot in the last couple few years since I've been here. Okay, Al, Al, sorry, Bill, you might want to um, give Al a heads up that we are being recorded. Yeah. Um, FYI. Okay. That's fine. Um, I don't care. I, that's fine with me okay. because everything nope, I say great. is true. Mm -hmm. Nope. That's great. Thank you, Al. And I, ha and I um, have no problem, and I have no problem working with the store. I have no problem seeing the store succeed. I want to see every business in town succeed. I'm not sure whether you, I, I kind of do, you know, I do feel bad for the owner because I think he's in the predicament. I think some of his staff might have been, you know, not paying attention or listening to him. But at this point here, somebody has to step up to the plate down there and do the right thing. We can't consistently have an issue down there with vaping and with food product being expired, with not following food protocol. And, and it's just, you know, and having to shut the store down three, maybe at least three times in two years that Sharon and myself have wrote a cease and desist order and shut him down for the day or two days and gone back after and done re-inspections to make sure that that stuff was discarded, uh, food court protocol was followed, egress was cleared. I mean, we shouldn't have to do that. In the town of Winthrop, being here six years as the Commissioner of Special Services, I can't tell you how many times I've had to shut anybody down. That's my that, that's the one thing I don't want to do. I'll work with anybody, but that store has been shut down more than anybody in the entire town in the time I've been here. Okay, thank you, Al. Bonnie, I have a question for you. I'm mm -hmm. concerned that they actually still have flavored products, the jewels, um, in stock. How do we how do we deal with that? Well, you know, if I if I were doing inspections, and I would have found that and made them take them out of there. Um, I would have how, assumed how would, that. How would now? How would you find it? How would you how would you actually find it? Well, I would go to the you know to the back of the um, the counter and look oh really okay yeah yeah i mean if you know i don't always do that but especially if a store has been a problem store 
then I do do that. I have, you know, I'm allowed to do that. So I do do it. I've looked behind their counters before at that store. And by the way, that being said, I just found out that my counterpart in um, who has the Saugus Lynn area, um, she actually goes into the back room after a law like this has passed to make sure that they don't have it on the premises. I've never done that, but according to DJ, we're allowed to. So, you know, I'll probably start yeah. doing that one and go back. To well, my, my concern is that they actually even have it in stock. I mean, that was, um, yeah. that rule was, yep. I think, in the yep. fall, correct? Sorry, say that so, again? I think that regulation um, that prohibits sales of that went back and in, went into effect in the fall, correct? Yes. Of 19. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let me get back to the point I suggested uh, to my fellow board members. So Al is going to um, inform me uh, about um, when they will be up for a new permit. So my suggestion was that we, they would have to come up with um, some amount um, that um, – that, uh, some amount that uh, they would have to pay before they could renew for a year and that the balance would have to be um, paid uh, in, the, in, the, in the forthcoming year or else they wouldn't be able to renew in the subsequent year. Does that make sense to you, Astrid and Susan? Yes, it does. Yes. Sounds and based on based on how how soon the um, the uh, time for for um, for before the renewal would be I mean, that would adjust it so for instance say you percent say three thousand dollars you said that over basically over a year that's more or less um, three you know two it's like two hundred fifty dollars or three hundred dollars a month or something like that so um, you know I, I try to kind of divide that up and come up with say I'm just making the if, if you know it's like three hundred dollars right away and then the balance over the per year or something something along those lines. Um, does that make sense? About that sounds reasonable to me. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I'll make I'll make that in the form of a motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. Aye. Okay. So that's three hundred dollars. Well, I'm going to say I'm going to say the reason I say this more or less is if they were if 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 they were if the time for renewal was six months from now, I would obviously want to have it higher. But if it's only coming up, if it's going to be done like we'll say next month, it would be a lot smaller amount. So I'm going to say um, the amount that they have to pay up front to some degree is based on how many months before they have to renew. So my guess is. Like 300, if they're going to be renewing a month. If it's six f months from now, I'd say they would have to pay half. Okay. Okay. So I'm just based on what the timing is. I'm kind of adjust the okay. amount. Just for the minute. That's fine. That's fine with yeah. me. I would okay. also add in to the terms um, that they're required to be re-educated by Bonnie, et cetera, okay. and any new staff or all staff get re-educated as well as new employees. I will include that. Right, thank you. Okay, so that's so, um, that. I'll I say something? Steve, sure. Yeah, hi. Uh, I, I just wanted to thank you guys for, for working on this. Because we've had numerous complaints. Unfortunately, they wanted to remain anonymous. So this was the first to go forward. But uh, this, has been, this has been an ongoing problem. Uh, we've had suspicions for a long time. So so it's kind of like sometimes when when somebody gets arrested for drunk driving, they say they say it's the first time they ever did that. It might there might be a lot of other cases that happen where we haven't been able to prove it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so, well, Steve, do you have any additional recommendations? No, I'm good. I'm sorry, you're cutting out. 
Uh, no, I don't. I just want him fined and educated, and hopefully we can move forward from there and he won't violate it again. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Steve. Thank you. Okay, the next item I have on the agenda, just briefly, well, Bonnie. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, and Bill, think, can we go back to can we go back to that issue for a minute? Um, sure. So, does that are you suspending the suspension, or do you? No, no, no. Uh, so you'll set another date. For yeah, I'll, I'll send another date. Um, okay. Which okay. which will be um, the seven day issue. What will happen? What's going to happen is when Al, Al's going to find, give me the information so I can kind of adjust what the what the payment schedule is for the fine. And then mm -hmm. I'll put that in a letter with the new suspension dates that Al will be able to serve him with. Okay. So he'll get he'll get the new suspension dates. He'll get the payment plan for the fine, and he'll get the information about um, the education. And I'll include you obviously on that, Bonnie. But you can also communicate great. with okay, him. Okay, great. Yep. Okay. Um, and um, so just just briefly, Bonnie. Uh, and I think you mentioned it at one point, maybe, in, is at some point you're going to get um, some information to us from from DJ about how to amend our existing regulations to comply with the, with yeah. the new state. I did talk to him about that, but there's been so much going on that he kind of, you know, he sort of said, well, they're, they're pretty much with, this, with it anyway, and the state is super superseding it but he did say he would get back to me and we'd do more so um you know i'm happy to bring it up to him again but he, he didn't seem worried about it at all yes okay. <laughs> I will. Well, I'm, not, I'm not worried about it but i'd like i'd like i'd like some guidance not not that yeah. we're not busy enough but if we had mm -hmm. if we had a model draft it would certainly yes. speed along mm -hmm. the process for us to be able to to amend our town sure. rigs so that they comport at the state. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, you know, it's like a lot of other things. We only have so much time as this Board of Health. And if somebody gives us right. something that's ready to go, it's much easier for us to do something. And then we have to sit down and and draft something and then run it by him. And, you know, it's a lot longer okay. process. I will, get, I will get on what? that right away. Yeah. So, so when he so, and the, here's the way to do it, Bonnie. When he praises us about what a great job Winthrop is doing, yeah. Then you right then right away say, well, that's that's terrific because they were saying what a great job he does, Probably. particularly if he drafts a new model reg for us. Okay, I will tell him. Oh, and by the <laughs> way, since since Steve is still on the line, um, Steve, uh, the lawyer that works with the tobacco control programs said that in his 23 years of doing this work, he's had only three police departments ever get involved in this kind of thing, and he was very impressed. <laughs> Almost done. Thank you. I let myself in about two minutes. Naturally, the vaping's important to us. <laughs> we'll still be involved. <laughs> okay. Well, that's great. And, uh, okay, and then I noticed, Bonnie, you, you sent us also something with... You had a, two, a training two pager for just timeliness. You had a, you sent us, and I forwarded it uh, to Astrid and Susan today. You sent it this morning regarding um, this. Uh, I guess the letter you're gonna and 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 a, and a flyer going out to retailers in terms of what they can't do as of June first. No menthol, no mint, winter wintergreen, right. no flavored, no flavor. So well. The letter already went out. That went out in yeah. May. Yeah. I just wanted to but have I mean, a copy of it. So. Yeah. Well, and then, so he, you know, they could, our friend there at, at, at Winthrop Square Market, you should send him a copy of this ASAP so he can see the pictures too. You know, pictures say a thousand words. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, or yeah. not just well, him, but, well, you know, all, all of the retailers. Right. Yeah. We, Did they get the the intent? The intention was to bring those in when we start going back, you know, to bring uh -huh. them in and he put them in their hand. Um, yeah. Because first of all, I don't have the email addresses for all of the stores. I've been yeah. working on that, but it's been really difficult. So um, 
I hired a couple of other people who are going to help with the education. And um, tomorrow we'll know more about when they believe we'll be heading back out to the stores. And mm -hmm. then uh, they, they would be bringing hard copies with them. Okay. And I would. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Bonnie, I trust that you will put Square Market at the top of your list. I'm sorry, say it again. So, I trust that you will put Square Market at the top of your list once you do go back out. Absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're not, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So whenever you get that info information from DJ, uh, I'll work on a redraft of our rigs. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. I think, Bonnie, unless you want to stay with us, I think we, we're done with you. Okay. We're never done with Bonnie. And with, and with Steve. Of course, you're welcome to stay. But um, well, I think I'm going to go off to my class. So. I'm good. Okay. Thank you. Bonnie, thank, thank you, you Bonnie. for everything. Stay well. Okay, Thanks, Bonnie. My pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, Detective uh, Rogers. Thank you. Okay. So uh, we're going to deal with the next issue, dealing with COVID-19 issues. But just since Al might have missed this uh, earlier, we talked about the park at Harborview, Al. And uh, basically, I've drafted an order um, for a fine, which I will send to you tomorrow. So that can be served on them. Okay. So so it's the, it's the park at Harborview you're, you're speaking of? Yeah. Yeah, we're finding them a thousand dollars for the incident that Meredith brought up, where they had staff without wearing a face mask. Mm -hmm. Okay, just get that over to me tomorrow. I'll be working yep. with Meredith tomorrow, anyways, because we're going to be doing some work on um, restaurants. Um, an email came out from the town manager tonight saying that you know some basically, from what I look at it, Meredith, Meredith might want to chime in on this. Um, it looks like it's delayed openings, and um, you know these other departments need to sign off. DPW, fire, police, and what's happening is licensing went ahead and said, you know, basically, you know, open, you know, this, that, and blah, 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 and which is fine, but not, you know, really paying attention to protocol on having other departments, waiting, especially DPW, when they're going to be occupying sidewalks to make sure there's barriers and the safety precautions put in place and things like that. So I had. You know, I was lucky enough to, today to be blessed with Meredith's company, and we drove around, and we actually looked at a lot of the restaurants that went through licensing last night just to try to get a feel on, you know, some of them are, some of them set up, and some have done a great job, by the way, setting up, and I think they're going to be fine, and some of them haven't set up, and the ones that haven't set up, we kind of, you know, put our visual on it, so when their plan is in, we can actually look at the plan and actually look at the visual. So I'll be working with her in the next upcoming days on that stuff, um, so which is which is actually great because it's nice to have the help and it's nice to work together with her. It's good to have a second set of eyes. Um, that way, I don't miss things, and then I get her medical expert uh, expertise behind me also, which is which is which is phenomenal. Thank God. So that's basically where we stand on that. Um, and I will definitely serve that to you tomorrow. If you get to, if you get it to me, you know, whenever I'll bring it right over. It's not a problem. Great. Thank you. I uh, I did tell uh, uh, Mark. Um, Chaplain name from the Board of Licensure when he sent me some questions, or he asked, sent me a text about some questions regarding uh, outdoor dining and stuff. And I said, you got to talk to Al. Um, yeah. Well, I did. I did. I was on a licensing meeting um, last night, and I did give them my um, my concerns about you know protection of safety and some of the other concerns that I had. Um, I think they actually realized those concerns. Um, but they did, you know, sign off on quite, you know, quite a few places. But I think they also realizing that we have to, you know, our, ourselves, you know, as other departments that are going to be in concern, will be signing off on those. So they did say that, which was excellent too. So basically, I think it's just going to be, you know, we're pretty much working with all our departments together and trying to make sure that the, you know, it, at the end of the day, we want everybody open. We just want people to be safe. That's the most important. Absolutely. Thing. Safety. Yep, I agree. I agree with you, and and also, um, um, I sent you a, just before I forget. I sent you a um, a question, uh, an email that Barbara Bishop had sent from the speaker's house about using gloves. Did you see that email? No, I didn't. But I haven't had a t chance. I've been, I've been, I've been. No, so I know, I know. Trying to issue permits on top of everything that I got going on. I have people pounding me into the ground for building permits. 
instead of yeah, no, she get back to work and make money to support their family. So no, I don't know. I know. I know but that. I but I, mean, I yeah. I mean, I just um, so I mean, you know, just you know, when it comes when it comes to the speaker's office, I try to absolutely. I, try to I look respond. at it when, I, when I'm done with the Zoom. I look at it and I'll tackle it immediately. Yeah, it was just a few. This was like last week. Um, I sent it to you and Sharon. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Sharon, Sharon addressed it that. Now, I thought you were sending a new one today that I didn't see. No, 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 no. This was last week. Addressed that. That's been addressed. Okay, good. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we, she jumped on that immediately, actually. Sorry. Yeah, I appreciate it. No, no. There was miscommunication there, Bill. I wasn't sure. I was Not like, did, you, did you miss it today? Because, you know, I see a lot of emails from you, and I do my best, you know, diligence to answer your e emails um, or, or to look at them, especially look at them, because I know they're always important. But today was just kind of a really tough day. <laughs> I, didn't get, I didn't get a chance to get to everything. So I just want to say one more thing about the restaurant reopening. I, since we're that's kind of where we are right now in our topic yep. anyway, I think. So um, it is great that I absolutely applaud um, the licensing board for going through, you know, jumping through all those hoops and trying to approve those businesses. Um, obviously, the other town departments need to sign off. But I think it's going to be absolutely paramount that uh, patrons as well as employees of those restaurants absolutely adhere to those guidelines of wearing masks uh, when they are in these businesses and when they can't uh, stay six feet apart. Um, obviously not while they're eating, but you know when they're preparing food, etc. Because one violation uh, could spark an outbreak, and then we could go ten absolutely. steps back, ten steps back with our reopening. And we don't want to, we don't want to jeopardize our privilege of being able to open these businesses now. And I see Astrid, that I as a privilege. With, I, I, I agree with you 100%. I know where you're going with this, and I, I share your thoughts, and we're going to work and, extremely hard to make sure that they do. And I think what's going to have to happen, too, and I'm sure that you as the Board of Health will all agree that in the process of these people being open, there'll have to be spot checks. We'll have to do unannounced yes. inspections in the yes. evening and stuff like we've been doing anyways through this mm -hmm. whole thing. Um, I think that's more, very important. That's, absolutely, it's important. It's more important now yeah. than ever because now there's going to be people actually congregating next to each other, so it's going to be a little bit different than the takeout situation that we had. Yeah. So I think it, it really is a privilege for us to be able to do this now and help the businesses and help our absolutely. residents have a yep. better life too, yeah. better quality of life. To down but I think myself, this, believe me. But absolutely. <laughs> yeah. uh, but so. I think it's it's very important that every single person that goes to these businesses adheres to the rules and also the businesses and restaurants themselves do that and that is going to be paramount otherwise we are going back this can be revoked by the governor any minute absolutely i agree no disagreement Thank you. On Al, do you have how how will you um what are your plans for monitoring and enforcing because I know so you're really on resources. How are you going to get well, around this? Monitoring will be basically showing up unannounced, as you would do. Obviously, you're not going to call somebody and say, hey, listen, I'm coming over there. Make sure, you know what I mean? Because you're going to show up unannounced. And we're going to probably do it in the evening. Um, you know, after after inspectional services close, maybe 6, 7 o'clock, um, we'll go by and we'll do spot checks. You know, that's, this is what we're going to have to do. This is what we've been, we've been doing, this, Susan, all along. Um, we've been checking out yeah. on the takeout areas. We, you know, I mean, okay, we've caught people see, in certain I restaurants okay. that didn't have masks okay. on. You remember, I've reported to you in the past. So you, yeah, you're okay. well aware of our, of our good, our good efforts, our efforts, I should say. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So just in terms of um, any issues regarding COVID-19, either you, Al, or Meredith, in terms of any particular issues I you want to raise... I think that has to really go to Meredith. She's the expert on that. You know, she has the medical degree. I don't. You know, sure. obviously, um, I jump more of the enforcement degrees. <laughs> so I have to lean on Meredith for all this stuff. I can't, you know, really speak um, of that because it's not my discipline, you know, sorry to say. So I think you really need to really, you know, sure. hear what she has to say because she's pretty much the boss and running the show when it comes to all this. All right. That's I'll, I'll turn over to the boss then. <laughs> the boss, boss Hurley. <laughs> that's well, you're the boss true. when it comes to this, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, thanks, Al. Yeah, um, I'll get us into trouble, put it that way. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, so around kind of, so obviously this. Um, I'm just going to get that. 
that's what Al and I and um, everybody else has been spending a lot of time on um, licensing last night. Um, so I so I am anticipating it's tomorrow is going to be kind of a hard day because we. It, I think that the expectation is is that um, a lot of the restaurants that were approved for the licensing last night will be able to open tomorrow. If that's not actually the case, we have to do sign offs. Um, the town is putting out that like that it needs. So licensing was the first step. Um, and now um, there needs to be an application to the town manager's office with sign offs from um, DPW police fire. Um, and so that is going to happen as quickly as possible. And um, there's it's spelled out in a packet that was put together by Coleman and Page um, in and the town manager's office. Um, so it's all for businesses. Um, and so that's going to be going out either later on tonight. There's also an online um, an online form for people to for businesses to work on as well. Um, and then, so working through that, and um, um, also working with Parks and Recs, um, some of the youth serving organizations, um, getting together with DPW and going over um, the protocols for the playground, what kind of We lose her? To be, yeah. oh. um, can you hear me? Sorry. Yep. Yeah. You're cutting um, out a little bit. So what kind of signage needs to go up? Also, um, what kind I've gotten, um, Matt Honan has made some excellent signs. So we're going to be putting those on the beach tomorrow just for reminding people about, um, remind people about social distancing. Um, it's just so hard because already things have changed. So whereas, you know, during phase one, there was no ball playing, for example. Now you can play ball as long as it's not contact. So it's like, as soon as we make up these signs, we're almost having to <laughs> change them it's or changes. modify them or, you know, do things like that. So um, those are kind of the big things that we're focusing on right now. Also, starting on Friday, we're going to be doing, um, I'm thinking it's weekly, it might be bi weekly. The reopening of schools task force um, put together by superintendent Howard we're going to start working on that with the protocols that are starting to come off from uh, Desi that's going to be a lot of logistics I have two possibly three interns starting next week from BU School of Public Health that are going to be helping with some of the enforcement education that we're going to be needing around parks and rec restaurants, um, you know, the guidance and the education, remind people about keeping their distances um, and also policies and um, position, you know, position papers on why we're doing things and working with the business community and also tracking data uh, in more real time. And the contact tracing collaborative is working a little bit better. I'm worried if we had a surge, it would become overwhelmed. So I'm also going to be training these interns on doing contact tracing. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I'm trying to think what else. Um, on a side note, non-COVID related, working on a project with the CDC, along with the Bloomberg Foundation for Public Health and Safety um, team to um, further delve into opioid addiction. Um, also had a meeting with East Boston Neighborhood Health Center about their asthma program and expanding that in some capacity. And um, I think that's kind of it at this point. I'm sure you have a couple of questions about COVID. Mm -hmm. um, Meredith, I have to go back to, um, if you can speak to um, working with the schools. Are you, I'm sorry, I missed something. Are you looking at reopening in the fall? Is that what you said? Yeah, we're starting to look at what the guidance is coming out from from um, the Department of Education. Um, okay, okay. And okay. Great. it's Thank pretty you. complex what they're saying. So it's um, trying to get our heads around, you know, reconfiguring parts of the school to make 
reopening of schools happen. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, so I guess my only, um, you've got a lot on your plate. Um, I would just keep a key stakeholder in, um, in mind, our, our residents, what we need to continue to do. You know, we're giving mandates to businesses, schools, et cetera, but um, I'm going to go back to Astrid. We just we have to keep getting reminded about what we have to continue to do. So if you just keep that in mind, thank you. Sure. Okay. Um, so since you uh, – let's go to the next thing we have. I think it will be relatively quick because I don't – Bill, can you hear me? Hello, yes. guys. Can, can, would you mind if I gave my brief because I'm, I'm supposed yeah. to go be at a birthday so, party. There's yeah, no, so now and I can't even enjoy it at all. And, you know, I'm okay, let's, company, let's, obviously. Um, no, let's do it. Two things. One is the rodent sorry. problem, which, and then anything Probably. else you want to oh. talk about. Okay, so the rodent problem we've been addressing. Pages <laughs> in all these areas of town now, starting as of this week, they've been on Court Road. They've gone up and down Court Road, and what they're doing is they're baiting like almost every couple of houses on the right and on the left to knock them down. And then we're hitting areas of Somerset up on the other end. So if we hit those areas, we're hitting areas up in Highland. I mean, you know, as you know, we've been doing trash enforcement. It's been ongoing. People have been getting, cit you know, not citations, but they've been getting warnings because we're really trying to stay away from any type of money citation right now because things people are hurting, as you know, out of jobs, lost their jobs, et cetera. But it doesn't mean that they can just throw trash all over the place either. So we're doing our due diligence on that. Um, it'll be nice to see what happens with the, rat the rats. Um, I don't think you'll see anything for the next week and a half to two weeks because they do have to take the bait. Um, and then we'll see if they get knocked down at that point. I'm hoping they do, and I'm hoping that I don't have to bait that much and I can release the bait because, one, the town doesn't have the financing, and I don't want to have baiting all over town either because it's not healthy, as you guys know. Um, so that's going to be for a short period of time. I'm going to monitor that very, very closely with Paige um, to make sure that it's done properly and it's not overbaited, not underbaited, and it's done quickly, and we back right off it and go back down to the normal baiting areas that we've always agreed to do and we've been ongoing for the last couple of years. Trash enforcement will stay running nonstop. We we're going to have people, we're going to have some of the inspectors coming in the evenings and try to, you know, really pay attention to people that, see the problem is, is, is that as you guys know, everybody's home, everybody's cooking, everybody's getting takeout. But the thing is people not buying the extra barrels they need. So say you had two barrels and it worked fine for you, and now that you're home cooking all this food and having all the steakout, now you really, really need four barrels, and you're just putting the trash bags on the ground and not rodent-proof trash bags. So with that being said, that's problematic because they're going to eat right through. It's going to make them come out of the woodwork because now the restaurants at that at the last months have been down on product and not producing as much product like I spoke of before. So that's making them look for other food in other areas. So that's what's going on there. We've been doing, you know, so I announced inspections on protocol, making sure people are wearing masks when they're in the restaurants and the people serving are wearing their masks. Um, that's still ongoing. And then um, that's it. I mean, we're just extremely busy. We're extremely busy. And um, Al, right now, Al, we're more busier we, than what ever. Can we do, Al, what can we do to educate the public about... Well, um, what, I, what I suggest we could do, oh, I mean, very simply, get it out in the blog. Let people know. I had spoke to this before. I think the town manager right, um, right, right. is, is, is in the process. Yeah, the town manager is in the process of drafting something. I spoke to him about this in uh, Larissa, getting it out on, on the website, getting out on the blog, getting out in the newspaper. Let people know, listen, do your due diligence. Make sure you have extra balance because people, you know, what will happen is these rats will mark, they'll end up in people's homes. And that's when they'll well, yeah, but it may it may um it may require you to draft something that he can. Help. Well, that's what. May, well, I'm going to talk to Sharon, you know, about this um, tomorrow, and also I want to I want to really get feedback from Paige, because now that they're actually really exploring these areas like the Highlands, the Port Road areas, let's see what they come back and what their explanation is to me on the areas that are you know uh, that are really bad and what their what their whole ex explanation is, and that way there I can put the whole packet together. Get it up to the town manager. Okay. All right. Listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna we... put you down. I'm gonna put you down yep. in the minutes that you will. Of course you will. Back to <laughs> I'm okay, sure you great. will. <laughs> thank you. I know Al. you will actually. Thank you. All right. Al. So that's thank you guys. Thank you so much for everything. All and right. That, and I'll see you at the next meeting. If you need me, call okay. me as usual or email me. Okay. Thank yep. You. Thank you. Bye bye. Let's go. Um, let's go back a bit. Just, just kind of a couple things passed over quick. So. Um, 
uh, let's see what we're doing. A big so, um, so we were talking about. Um, let's see, parks. Do, do we have anything else that we needed to talk to about um, with the um, COVID? Are we done with COVID stuff? I just wanted to show a couple slides since we are on WCAT. I wanted to take this opportunity to just educate a little bit. Okay. Since um, it's going to be quick, let me just okay. get this. So, um, just so to remind everyone, I don't know who can see this, but this is your face covering decision guide. And um, I gave this uh, to um, WCAT to, to run this every now and then on, um, on the public television so that people are reminded and we can also certainly sh maybe share it with um, the town manager's blog, et cetera, to be put, have it put, be put out. Because I, I continue to see a lot of people not wearing masks uh, in a setting where they should. And I think this kind of guide makes things a little bit more easy to understand that you have to, you don't have to wear a mask when you're outdoors as long as you stay six feet away from someone who doesn't live with you, right? So this is one thing, one question that I've received all the time. And then also um, or I'm receiving um, over and over again. And then if you go into a business, you have to wear a mask. And I continue to see people that do not wear masks when they go into a business and they, they continue to be served in a business <laughs> without wearing, wearing a mask. And that is absolutely not acceptable. We all need to do our part right now. We can go back to, you know, complete shutdown if we are not careful and our numbers keep are going up again right now they're going down which is beautiful and i just want to show this again here this shows you know the percentage of tests which were positive over the last six weeks you see here on, on april 25th we had 18 percent positive tests now we have five percent positive tests now if we're not careful with this reopening they're going to go back up and that's what governor baker and his staff and the dph are monitoring and when these numbers go up we are going to have to shut things back down and that would be very terrible for everybody's you know well-being and financial well-being etc so i really want to emphasize the importance of everybody doing their part and this shows you beautifully how the numbers have gone down in the last month it's really nice in the state let's do our part in winthrop too that this is not going back up so that's my public service announcement for today. <laughs> well, no, that's I, I agree. Thank you, Astrid. And <laughs> what I'm going to do... Um, go ahead. No, go ahead, Susan. Oh, okay. Um, as far as dissemination of the face covering guide that recently came out, um, I agree with Astrid. Get it on the town manager's blog uh, weekly. I would put it on all our social media. Let us, let's get it out to businesses, and um, I was thinking the library, libraries are going to start opening. Wherever we yep. can get the message out, let's do it. It's very yeah. important. I see this as a, a public health experiment. We have never done this before. This has never happened before, right? So we have to kind of tread carefully. That's why the stage two, phase two, is actually caution. So we are not yes, back to yes, we are in a caution like phase like and that. stage, and we need yep. to make sure that people are still adhering to those gui guidelines. I know a lot of people are sick of the virus, but the sick uh, the virus is not sick of you yet. So there's still <laughs> transmission ongoing. We just had the the case at uh, the cases at the park uh, harbor at Harborview facility. We cannot let go yet. It's not we're not there yet. Numbers are going down. It's beautiful. Agree. But please, please, whoever is seeing this and listening to this, we can't let go yet. We're not there okay, yet. Okay, so Astrid, what I would suggest, could you send this off to Larissa, the guide? And yep. really, I think the uh, take home message is caution. And, yes. Um, send the message. Thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'll send. I'm gonna send it to the face covering one to the the editor at the transcript, asking him to oh, put it in as well. Great, great. That's wonderful. Thank you. Because I, I think it's. I think it's. It can't be overemphasized. I think it's well done. Yep, great. Yeah, yeah yep. visuals and vi and good visuals, you know, much easier yep. than trying to explain exactly. something in a in an article. Right, great. Great, thank you, uh, Astrid, for doing that. 
Um, so, so I think we're, unless there's something else to, to talk about in terms of COVID-19, I'm going to go to the next item, which is bottle redemption. Um, and the, what happened was just, uh, I got a, um, an email from, uh, Mark Wallace at, at the, um, with the marketplace on Thursday afternoon um, with some concerns about the whole issue of bottle redemption, et cetera. So I said to him, because it was right at the time that I was preparing our agenda for the night, that I would put it on our, our, our agenda. In fact, I revised our agenda to include that topic. And then subsequently uh, I saw that um, – and he said he was going to hold off taking returns at that point. That was on thir last Thursday. And then I saw later that evening, which I didn't get to until the next day, that Jeff Stone had sent us information about the bottle and, and can redemptions. And, and basically, the uh, requirement from the Mass Department of Environmental Protection basically said that enforcement of redemption requirements resume at retailers using reverse vending machines, which he has one of those at the marketplace on June 5th, which was Friday. So that, so on Friday, I, when I saw that, I said that that um, information from the environmental protection would be the basis of our discussion this evening. And that, that was in the afternoon on Friday. And then he subsequently sent me an email that basically said that they were taking the bottles right away that day. So um, I don't think that there's necessarily anything further we need to talk about um, since He's complying. I would agree. I agree too. So I'll then move on to the next thing. Um, town beaches. Um, this I put this on the agenda, and I think Astrid, I know, has followed up with some, some emails, is that I, at the last town council meeting, and I think we had the discussion at one point, that the guidelines that were issued by the governor at one point only covered state beaches. And then there was some question as to whether or not we needed, to, and this came after one of our meetings, uh, that there was a question of whether or not we had anything in place to enforce guidelines in terms of social distancing, et cetera, on town beaches and whether or not we needed to do something. So that's why I put it on the agenda and then I know Astrid um, sent uh, a couple of emails uh, today um, regarding regarding that issue. So, uh, mm -hmm. did you have some thoughts, uh, Astrid? Well, I mean, we could. There are certainly towns in Massachusetts that are that have done it. Down on the Cape, for example, a lot of towns have issued their own um, beach regulations because they um, they have to do because their beaches are not necessarily um, uh, state beaches. So the state beaches are under DCR and they have issued guidelines that are very clear um, and also have sent emails to, to beach you know, managing uh, authorities about how that should be managed. But town beaches are, as you said, not included in that. So I think we need to think about doing something that should be basically in line i think with what the what the state beaches are um uh, what is done for the state beaches it shouldn't be different because then people get confused yeah no i i i think that makes sense um mm -hmm. would you like to do something on an astrid <laughs> i i can <laughs> i can i mean i i, oh, I know the reason I just, I... Uh, yeah go ahead so my no, um so I don't know if you guys are considering making it like a public health order or um, guidance. So one of the things that Astrid sent this afternoon, um, she did a couple. She sent me a couple things today. I think there were only two, Astrid. Um, yeah. One one was um, a copy, I think, of the governor's order. Um, order expanding access to and use of state beaches and addressing other outdoor recreational facilities. And then she sent another thing, which was beach guidelines for yep. managers, um, which basically talked about, you know, 
face coverings, group size, et cetera. So I didn't know whether you were thinking, Astrid, along the lines of an order or guidelines. No, I or think what it should think? be gui a, guide, a guidance. So I think when you look at the governor's order, it's actually, it doesn't, com uh, it doesn't contain all these details, like should we put trash bins out, you know? Is that something we should do or not do? I know the mm -hmm. DCR is not putting trash bins out, for example, because they consider that a coronavirus risk, you know? So the, these are the kind of things that you can do in a, you know, local guidance, you know, and then leave it to basically the town manager to, 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 to decide what they want to do. But I think, you know, when you look at the guidance, it's much more detailed than the governor's order. Mm -hmm. Did you have, what was your question, Meredith? Oh, no, just, um, it should be just an the order or guidance. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, I looked at other towns. I don't think they've necessarily issued a lot of orders. I think it was basically just guidance how these these this order by the governor should be implemented on their town beaches, which not isn't really covering the town beaches, but people don't necessarily know that. Well, the, the, you know, I don't know whether people know it or not, but I do know there was a comment kind of made at the council meeting and it was kind of like well it doesn't it, it, the order doesn't cover town beaches and the board of health at their meeting didn't do anything about it so so it sounded if you took it wrong that we were like not re, not we were ignoring our responsibility or something so that mm -hmm. kind of struck me as um some people at least think that there's nothing in place and that we kind of should do something yeah I mean, we could because then we can enforce it. But the question is, who's going to enforce it? Well, that was exactly my point. <laughs> that, well, what true, I was trying right? to get at. So I was waiting. Yeah, to no, it. that's true of anything. I mean, that's you know, I mean, we have anything we have in place that finds somebody. The only way, yeah. the well, only way that you can do something about it is if somebody catches somebody violating. So this is the document that's been that's been issued by the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs basically giving, you know, guidance for the reopening of beaches. And here it says, for example, you know, the, the six feet apart distance and the face coverings, you know, the group size, you know, all of this is not really necessarily included in detail in the governor's order. Um, and then it says, you know, like 12 feet distance actually between groups so that when you pass between them, you still have six feet from these people so it's actually not only six feet apart it's 12 feet apart and so there's all this stuff that you know i don't know we should we should consider like at least putting down in writing yeah. somehow what i don't know sorry so if i said i guess put down in writing what are our expectations and requirements i don't, I don't know i guess yeah. Now, yeah. i guess i went back to um how do we define municipal beaches versus <laughs> state? Maybe you could no, I mean, um, go over that yeah. again. So we have municipal beaches in town. It's Euro Beach, it's Donovan's Beach, it's Pike Pico, Pico, Pico. Beach, and um, Pico Beach. And then there's one more, which I always forget. I think it's there's Halford four. or something. Yeah, there's four town beaches. The Winthrop Shore Drive Beach is a state beach. That's regulated by the DCR. Yep. So we have right, no right, jurisdiction right. over that beach. That beach is basically under the governor's order, and they're not putting out trash bins. They have limited lifeguards this year, et cetera. So all this stuff. Um, so basically, could, is it up to us? It's up to us to define what uh, the regulation is? for our our town beaches yes, yes. yes. Exactly. correct yes. Okay. and you know my the main beach that is the beach in question is obviously euro beach i don't think we'll have yes. crowding on any of the other beaches right right you know euro beach is the one that i'm concerned about and yes. you know do we need to put anything in place that you know gives us some i don't know some way to I would, to enforce I think, that. I think we need something i think we need something that will be accompanied by signage. Yep. That's a good point. Um, yeah. I think what I was suggest is, you know, that if if I was going to ask Astrid to draft something, 
since since I got a couple other ones that I'm working on. But um, yeah. if you drafted something, we could we could comment on it and because and we could basically you know take a vote tonight that we're going to imp implement some type yeah. of order I mean, or advisory. I, I don't know how detailed I want to do it. I mean, the most yeah. important things I think that should be in place is the social distancing guideline and the face yeah. mask the guidelines, yeah. and then everything else. You know, I I find less concerning, you know, if there are a couple kids playing with balls there, you know, ball, playing ball, sorry, <laughs> playing ball with each other. That's not my concern. My concern is that people are crowding the beaches when it comes to the summer, especially also yeah, people I that agree. maybe not, I'm not from in town. So, you know, I, I really think that should, we should be able to somehow get a handle on that a little bit. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I, some of this looking at, some of the some of the stuff that's on this other ones there are you know there are a lot of things I mean, we don't have you know over yeah. sand vehicles and and exactly. some other things but but yeah. i think if we have a one or two page it hits the hot it hits the main points and i agree with you the governor's order is a lot of words and it's it's not as, quite frankly as helpful whereas um yeah uh, like practical you know. guidelines, I think we should put in yeah. place. Some yeah, some bullet points. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Tra you know, so whatever you think makes sense, trash and face coverings and, yeah. you know, size and I mean, of people. I like the carry in, distance. carry out thing too, because yep. Yep. we've always had issues with trash, but I, I'm worried that we'll have the beaches full of trash anyway, if we have barrels or not. But I think carry in, carry out on state beaches, that's the yep. case. You know, we should maybe do the same thing. Um, it's, I don't know, it's difficult, but I think these things are yeah. required in some ways, especially the, uh, the distancing and the face masks. I agree. I don't know, Meredith, yes, do, you have any, do you have I'm any? I'm happy to help you with, I'm happy to help you with this. So if I see some visuals or graphics, I'll send them along to you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I yeah think, so I, think I can tell you, um, what I had, um, so. So what Matt Honan to put oh, at the front up. of, oh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Repeat. So yeah, Matt please. Honan, yeah. in, um, yep. I can um, Like I can show you something you. here. For example, there's Yarmouth has to, for example, put out a beach access plan, right? It's not. It's not super comprehensive, but it's something I'll share it one second. Um, and that, um, that has a sign with it that I kind of, it's very simple. We could do something like this. Uh, one second, it is this one. Um, so this is their, you know, beach access plan. And then they have this sign, you know, mm -hmm. they That's save yeah. Winthrop, we would put, remember these tips while at the beach, keep your distance, please wear a mask if social distancing not possible, you know, avoid touching and crowds. So this is one thing we could consider doing. Yeah. So, um, this is what, um, this is what Matt um, has already put up. Let me see if I can share it. Um, one second, I have to just stop sharing. Oh. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Hold on. Um, so these are the ones that are going to be going up tomorrow. Let me just. Hold on. And where are they going? They're going on Euro Beach. Um, oh, good. And is he just doing it out of the goodness of his heart? Him. Do I have to double click? So, can you see? The um, the one on the left is going to yep. be the bigger one. Yep. Um, great. that's going at all of the um, all of the um, entrances to Euro Beach, and then the blue ones are going to be on sticks, and we're going to be pl putting them into the sand along that's the nice. beach. I like that a lot. That's great. That's really great. So, and I, so I I don't think it has to be an order. Quite frankly, I don't think. I, I think people are getting kind of sick of orders and we can't enforce them all, you know? So I think it's more important to educate people and just give them guidance what they need to do. And I think, you know, that's my 
personal perspective, but I don't no, know. No, that's fine. Agree. That's fine with me. I agree. I, I agree. Yeah, also, sure. this will change, you know, at some point. And yeah, exactly, we, have to, exactly. we have to rescind all those orders at some point. Exactly. No. <laughs> could just do like the governor. You just have a new order which supersedes the previous one. <laughs> yeah. Meredith, uh, could you – Great. Is it possible to so, send them via email to me? Because I'm not – To all of us? So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. be great. Thank and then you. I will draft some guidelines or guidance mm-hmm. – that we can maybe send to the transcript and town manager's blog, et cetera, to be posted. Mm-hmm. Great, great. Okay, is that something so that- you're do, Yeah, you'll send us a draft yeah. and we'll look of at course, it. Of yep. course, I'll send you draft first. I won't just Sounds send it Sounds great. Yeah. And then- Thank uh, you, excellent. Matt okay. Honan, okay. Great. Um, mm-hmm. So that's, anything else, uh, Meredith, that- you wanted to bring to our attention? Um, no, I think that that's it right about now. Okay. There we go. Thank you so much. Are you hanging in there? Yeah, yeah. I took yesterday off, which was nice. Wait a minute. Good. You took a day off? I did. I did. How, I took Friday how did the, off, too. How did the town survive without you? They did fine. <laughs> Well, that's that's a kind of a good manager. Good yeah. job. Well, she's got, she got great. Fought, she she's fought got out great the outbreak. Now she gets the rest. <laughs> I know. That's what I was saying. That was like my. Um, yes. I was like, we got to get the. Best. Yeah. <laughs> I need my Friday that's, off. That, that, so that's what they call. They respite. Before, before you go, Meredith, because um, I never hear anything from 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 Jean Maggio. Is the MRC? doing some stuff in, anymore or i know they were doing yeah some they stuff, did a, think, the food, they did a lot with um the food, food stuff food right bank. yep mm-hmm. yep and it's, now no, they're that, winding that's, down. that's changing though the food bank right it's winding down yep and then um there we started talking about um immunization the other day oh uh, okay i know oh meredith on that note do you get reports of our um compliance rate with um vaccinations through the state? Um, I, like how, no. report, I thought there was some um, state reporting database for immunization rates. Like the MIIS, yeah, there yeah. is. Um, yeah, yeah exactly. I suppose, yeah. but not everybody uses it. So, I mean, it's something. Is some place that tell us how we're doing? Um, probably. Maybe you could look, maybe you could look at it. Maybe I will. Have a minute. Okay, yeah. thank you. Great, thanks. Because I, it has been on my list of um things to inquire about. <laughs> okay. Thank you. No problem. The um, I just just I noticed also in terms of, I looked at both the budget for inspection services and 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 uh, public health, so I know it's a bleak. It's a bleak budget for everybody. Yeah, I would say. And, and they don't even know where, where any of the money is coming from from the state or anything. So. It's not yeah, a good when year. will that pass? When will they um uh, actually sign off on a budget? What's the deadline? Well, well, they're supposed to vote on a budget next week. Okay. The town, but but I'm not sure they know where the money's coming from i think i mean i, I so it's an, so i don't mean i don't know how accurate an exercise is it's going to be they're going to they're going to vote on some budget and of course during the year they might have to adjust stuff and who exactly is charged with that is the town council so what happens is the town council will, will vote on the manager's budget and and, and the way the uh, i believe the charter reads is the the council can add to the bottom line they 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 could make some changes in the budget but um but, but it can't they can't add to the budget so in other words to say they for instance they want okay. to, to okay. give to give the health department another staff person for at fifty thousand okay. dollars they'd have to come up with fifty thousand from some other department that, yeah. that they could take okay. it out of thank you uh, but as i said i think they so they i think they're pretty much at this point trying to have a minute you know budget with, with with not much increases and there's probably decreases in every department and then 
they might have to i don't know what at some point they might have to have furloughs or something else if they don't have the money i you know but i don't know what their plans are but anyways okay, I, I did look i did look at what they had in terms of a, a budget for both Meredith's uh, department and Al's department, and, uh, and they both had cuts. So not necessarily okay, in staff, but just cuts. Thank you. Okay. So so um, we only have a few more items, so we're doing pretty good so far. Um, so I did notice in terms of I put on the uh, North Shore, um, North Suffolk Public Health collaborative when I, whether there anything else was going on in terms of behavioral health and environmental issues i did know that we got we did get a an email from jeff that um we hadn't heard anything further about the status of that uh, rfr that we put in on the air quality ma monitoring issue mm -hmm. correct um, but my understanding is i think what from what meredith said is that the, the, is the North Shore, uh, is our collaborative ending basically per se as of the end of June, and is that because the departments uh, of Winter, Chelsea, and Vera aren't going to fund it, or what's going on? Do you know, Meredith? Last I heard that it was going to continue to be funded, but MAPC is going to be the organization that oversees it in lieu of um, a executive director. So they're going to get paid. They're going to use this. They're going to have the same amount of money, or what are they going to do? I don't know. I reached out to MAPC to get some more answers, and I haven't heard back from them yet. Because I, you know, I mean, the way the collaborative was was working is, you know, Winthrop and Revere and Chelsea each put in a pot of money, and that's how they basically hired Jeff. Yeah. So, so my guess would be if MAPC is going to be doing it, they're going to have to get paid something. Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. I think it's the same. It would be the same structure. Um, whether or not MAPC is going to be, you know, I'm assuming that it's going to be the same amount of money that Winthrop and Revere and Chelsea all contribute to it. And they going to have a dedicated person to handle it, or you don't? We don't know yet. I'm not sure. I don't know if it'll just fall under their public health um, office of MAPC. Okay. Meredith, are they um, one and the same that are spearheading the uh, visioning for 2030? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yep. Yep. The same group. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Anything uh, Anything else on uh, behavioral health, Susan? Yes. Uh, so we are meeting on Thursday to follow up on how our community is addressing um, supporting families during the pandemic mm -hmm. versus last month um, we spoke uh, primarily about how are we supporting our youth but since the uh, pandemic is not only affecting our youth but families at large we're going to be addressing that so that's uh, scheduled for Thursday okay anything else no that's it okay so next I sent you guys uh, an email and I also forwarded it to uh, Denise and Steck in terms of our meetings for um, the uh, balance of the year. So our next meeting, so basically meetings for July through December. And, okay. I'm, and uh, so I don't know if, you, if there were any problems with you, any of you for those dates right now. I have nothing planned so far. Because no traveling is allowed. No yeah. meetings are happening. Nope. Nothing. So, I mean, so the, ditto here. Yeah. So, the meeting right now, the next meeting we have for July is scheduled for the 14th. Okay. Um, then, August 11th, September 15th, October 13th, November 17th, and December 8th. That's I'm sorry, Bill, for the record, just go over those dates again, please. July 14th. Yes. July 14th. Yep. August 11th. Yes. Uh, September 15th. Good. October 13th. November. 17th. And December. 8th. Thank you. So uh, we can always change them, but that's what's in the books for now. Sounds good. And 
And, and uh, I saw that you sent us the walk winter thing, uh, Susan, so I appreciate yes, I that. Did. And uh, just wanted to, before we talk about proposed agenda items for July 14th, just wanted to mention the fact that uh, our distinguished vice chair said that she is going to be participating in the Tripoli planning meeting tomorrow yep. uh, for local boards of health. So yep, I'm, I'm sorry, just repeat that. What, what meeting is that? So when that. there's mosquitoes in the air, acid's oh, going to be there. <laughs> yeah, there's a, yep. we got an email, save the date, June 10th at 3 p.m., yeah. Triple E planning for local boards of health. Yep. Great. Do so it's, Astrid. It, and uh, Astrid is going to be winging into that meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's look at what we have for for, for July, uh, our next agenda. So I so obviously we'll have um, fifty nine cottage. Oh. We yeah. didn't ask okay. add about that. You didn't oh, get a response. Right. We have roundup. Yes. We'll probably have. I'm going to put on the agenda, in case they in case they appeal, park at Harborview. Okay. We, we might have something with bike safety from Julia. Uh, may and then and then. COVID. Co absolutely COVID. I'm not going to put down anything from tobacco sales unless we get something. We'll have COVID and then we'll have uh, our new a normal. Uh, inspectional services and uh, public health MRC and and I'll update about the mosquito meeting uh, well thing. that that sounds great and I think um, we should start thinking about uh, body art regulations so well uh, I'm gonna uh, um, yeah when you I know get they're not gonna be opening up I think until day three possibly but I think um, it's time to revisit our regulation in light of COVID as well. That's a good point. Do you, do you think we should do this in, in July? Well, actually, after you were going to um, do your magic and reformat the draft that yep. we had in place, maybe if you could send yeah. that to July and we can look at it and let's revisit it uh, given the new guidelines that were under um in yep. place right now yes sure i can do that that's what i would suggest let's start um a new draft and mm -hmm. revise accordingly okay uh so we might have body art then revision yes yeah 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 okay Sounds like a pretty good, pretty good meeting. Yeah, anything sure. else that anything else that we need to talk about? What about um, tobacco and tobacco reg? Well, I'm waiting. If, I'm waiting to see if she. Yeah. If well, if the tobacco sales, I'm going to wait and see if she sends us something. You want me to put it on the agenda, anyways? Um. Yes, just so we revisit and stay on top of our reg revision. Okay, so tobacco I'll put here, tobacco sales. Right. And you want to, you want, do you think we need to have the, the Winter Square Market? You want that on too? Well, I put, would put that under past business. Okay. Well, it's, it's still going to be in the agenda. Yes, yes. Okay. I think that's uh, So we have. Uh, um, what'd you say? No, I just wanted to say one more thing. So I think I got someone asked me on Facebook about playgrounds reopening because that's supposed to be part of phase two, but local playgrounds here aren't really open yet. And that's because um, the town is finalizing the sanitation guidelines and sanitation plan for the play structures they have to be sanitized uh you know regularly and i think mm -hmm. they they haven't finalized that plan yet and that's why they're not open but they will be opened as soon as that's in place okay 
just to I think it's I, I think that's um a good note to uh, Larissa to put out to um people why they're not open yet. Yeah. Yeah, in the daily update. Yeah. The weekly one. Oh, in the daily. It's update. a little confusing because yeah, some of the barriers have been removed by people and they're certainly I've seen people in playgrounds, but they're not officially open yet. Yeah, but you know what I and I did send um an email to Steve Collar about the terminology um, parks versus playgrounds. Yes, parks were opened, reopened in phase one, but playgrounds right. were not reopened until phase two. Yeah. Um, so I think I think that was confusing to people. But yeah. possibly, right. I don't know if we could get the message out to people why the playgrounds aren't open yet. However, yeah. we do that, I would suggest that. Okay. Okay. Anything else, folks, that we want to uh, discuss at our meeting tonight? I think I have nothing left. Susan? I'm good. I think I'm fine. Thank you. So should I move uh, that we adjourn at, yes, at 826? 826. Good job. That we, we, we moved through some things quicker than I thought. Yeah. I, I think part of the re we, we, you're good. We, all right. Good okay. good good night. Good night. Okay. Thank Calabash, you. Calabash wherever you are. <laughs>